Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie, Editor-in-Chief at TheServerSide.com, and I wanted to talk to you about GitLab, and specifically GitLab and the gitignore file. Now, as you can see, I've got a GitLab repository here. Adam, Baker, Carol are the files in GitLab, and Adam, Baker, Carol are the files over here in my local clone of that repository. And I'm going to just show you how Git works without gitignore. If I create a new file, abc html or something like that here you can see that file gets created and if i add it to the index and i do a commit file created and i do a git pushed origin well that file is going to get pushed up to the gitlab server here and you can actually see it abc.html but what happens if there's certain files that you don't want to go up to gitlab that maybe you'll need from day to day but you know, you don't want them as part of your repository, maybe a scrapbook file or something like that. Well, here's what you can do. You can create a new file called git ignore in the root of your git repository. So git branch examples is the root of my repository here. That touch command just creates a file called git ignore. Don't be impressed by the touch command. I could have just created that file by saying create new file. As long as the file is called dot git ignore, you're good. And in this file, I could say, hey, anything that ends in dot scrapbook or anything that ends in dot McKenzie should not go into the git repository, should not be part of a git commit. So I'm going to create that little git ignore file right there and then in this directory I'm going to go and add a couple of files with those extensions just to show you what happens. So uh, why don't I touch a file called touch cameron.mckenzie, that's my name, Cameron McKenzie, there's the file right there. Maybe touch experiments dot scrapbook is maybe just a you know a little file where I'm doing some experimental stuff that I don't want anybody else on my project to see. Well as you can see I've got two files here, one that ends in dot scrapbook, one that ends up in dot McKenzie, and actually I've got a third file I just added called git ignore. Now watch if I do a git status command, the git status command will say, hey, there's only one new file, git ignore. And it'll say, you know, it'll ignore this dot McKenzie and this dot scrapbook file. And the only reason it's doing that is because those files are listed in this git ignore file. And then if I do a git add and then a git commit command, Now all of a sudden only the git ignore file is added to the commit and if I do a git push to origin, watch this. Even though I've created these files in this local folder, even though I've done a git add and I've done a git commit, since I've said the dot scrapbook and dot McKenzie files should not be added to the repository, if I do a refresh over here, notice I get the git ignore file. So that's been added, but the dot scrapbook and the dot McKenzie files are not added over here. The git ignore file is working. And so there you go, that's how the git ignore file works. Now there is a whole syntax to git ignore. Atlassian has a great page that shows you all of the different syntaxes that you can use. So, you know, star dot file just ignores every file, but you could do something like star dot file and then say exclamation point important dot log and that'll say it'll ignore all logs except the important log files. You can say ignore everything in the logs folder and you can see there's a fairly extensive syntax for configuring the environment as you need. Also, it's worth mentioning that if you go to uh, topol.com you can find gitignore.io and here you can say you know I'm using uh, Eclipse what should I ignore for Eclipse and this will actually generate a cool um, gitignore file for you that will ignore everything that Eclipse does you can just copy that and then edit your own gitignore file and now you're ignoring all of the files that Eclipse will create for you. And for that matter, if you are using GitLab, when you create a new GitLab project, you can add a file and you can say, I want to create a, a new file. And when you go and create a new file, uh, you can select from a template and notice one of the templates is gitignore. And you can go over here and say, hey, I want to do a gitignore file for Java. And it'll put all of the basic files that need to be ignored in Java. For example, when you compile your code, you don't put a class file and you don't put 
packaged resources into the Git repository, this will automatically configure environment to ignore those. So that's helpful, a helpful resource as well. Anyways, that is how easy it is to configure Git, GitLab, and your Git ignore file. Now, uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I've got lots of great tutorials over there on Git, GitLab, DevOps, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And if you appreciated this short, to the point, and fairly brief tutorial, well, why don't you subscribe on the YouTube?